When I first heard about the 40 millimeter versions of the 5KX, I honestly thought it was pretty stupid. I mean, it's nothing really new as modders have been doing this for quite some time, but it seemed kind of odd that Seika was going to do it themselves. I mean, they're basically making a slightly smaller version of an iconic diver and then kind of giving it this dressy facelift, which is why some people have started nicknaming these the Dress KXs. Now, even though I thought it was kind of dumb, I was still a bit curious. But the thing is, I'd already paid Seiko's early adopter fees a couple of times last year, and I really wasn't inclined to do it again. So I decided that the smart thing would just be to wait more towards this fall, where they would more likely go on sale, which is what I should have done with the 5KX last year. Although at this point, I think it's pretty obvious that I eventually caved and picked one up. And the main reason for that is because over the last month, I kept seeing review after review on these, and they're all really positive. And after running across an eBay listing for the exact one I wanted, which was this gray dial version, and for a pretty good price, I couldn't help but pick one up. Now, after spending a few weeks with this one, I can tell you with absolute certainty that I was absolutely wrong about it. It's not a perfect watch in any way, but the combination of dressy and casual, I think make this one of the best affordable sport watches out there. And this gray one in particular, I think is gonna be the one to keep an eye on. When I took a look at the 5KXs last year, I was a bit underwhelmed by them. But these new SRPEs, well, as silly as this may sound, have really revitalized my faith in Seiko, that they still have the ability to create a great affordable everyday watch. Now, to that end, they did go with the 40mm wide case here, which for me is really a Goldilocks size with my 7-inch wrist. And of course, that's only 40mm wide without the crown, yet you're only looking at 41.7 width, and that's all thanks to the angled crown, which is typical of the case shape. And along those same lines, you're looking at some pretty stubby lugs in proportion, as lug to lug here is only 44.5. And that is pretty short for a 40 millimeter wide case. So even if you have a slimmer wrist, these should fit you perfectly. Although with larger wrists, like say eight inches, they might look a tad small. Now, what really differentiates this from the SKXs and the 5KXs that came out previously is that here you're looking at a total thickness just under 12 millimeters. So while it may have the case shape of a diver, it's sized more as a casual piece and that really makes the difference. It also has a great solid feel to it at 75 grams, or at least this one does as it only comes with a NATO. But regardless of whatever you put this thing on, with this size and weight, it's just extremely comfortable to wear. It just melts into your wrist, and you'd easily forget it was there if you weren't constantly fighting the urge to stare at this dial. Now, just like the previous 5KXs, we are looking at a water resistance of only 100 meters. But that's really perfect for what kind of watch this is supposed to be. Now, looking more closely at the case, I'd say the finishing is pretty much what you'd expect from a Seiko at this price. There's a nice circular brush finishing on top and a polished finish on both sides, as well as a polished beveled edge that runs between the two, which is also a pattern that's repeated for the clean bezel where there you also have a polished beveled edge that sits in between two brush sections like an Oreo. And the top section of that bezel has a circular brush finishing that matches the case. And even though it's a small thing, I have to say that going from a diving bezel to a clean fixed one really makes a dramatic difference in the feel of the watch, especially with these beveled edges on both the case and the bezel as they just reflect enough light to highlight the overall case shape and act as a frame that draws your eyes in. If you're used to micro brands, you'd probably be expecting a sapphire crystal. But remember, this is Seiko we're talking about, so unfortunately it's only hard licks. Although I think it's only a matter of time before some modders start swapping in their own sapphire. The overall case shape here is going to be similar to that of an SKX, which is famous for its rather stubby lugs. But here they are drilled, which is a really nice touch, and this is also something it shares with those 5KXs. And along those same lines, it also shares that nice organic curve to the sides as they taper towards the back. 
And just like most Seiko 5s, you do have a screw down exhibition case back here, where you can clearly see the rather plain looking 4R36 movement. But it does have a custom Seiko 5 rotor, which is a nice touch. Now, taking a look at the crown, you might think that it's missing something. And that's because for whatever reason, Seiko just refuses to give you a signed crown at this price which is a complaint I have here and on a bunch of other Seikos. It's kind of a minor thing, but for me the watch just looks generic without something there. The crown itself is a good size, and it's mostly easy to utilize. Although just like the 5KXs, I really wish they had a screw down crown here, as this case shape with these angled crown guards is really meant to be used with a screw down crown which once you unscrew it pops out beyond those crown guards. But here those crown guards partially block the crown as you're trying to use it. It's not too difficult to use, but this would be so much better if they just put a screw down crown in it. Going to Seiko's website, I see that there are now nine of these SRPE models, which all look great in their own right, but for me, the gray one is the one to get. It's almost a gunmetal gray with just a brilliant sunburst effect to it. It's fantastic looking, and there really isn't much else like it near this price. Starting at the top center, we have the Seiko 5 logo. And this is their newer logo, which I've seen before on my Pepsi 5KX. And there it looked decent, but here it looks great on this sunburst gray dial. Even the automatic text on the bottom, I think has more of an elegant feel to it. Now, something else you might notice down there is this made in Japan text, which really isn't something I expected at all. So I'm not sure if they're all like this or I just happen to get lucky, but either way, I'm happy to see it. Now, the overall dial layout is gonna be similar to the 5KX with smaller dots that populate the dial for hour indicators, which are then interrupted by a triangle at the 12 and ovals at the six and nine with each of those prime indices having a long elongated point going towards the center, which basically creates a crosshair effect which instantly orientates your eyes. The indices are beautifully done with a mirror polished framing holding white loom centers. The polished silver framing can blend into the gray sunburst dial, but the white centers and how the light reflects off those edges always make them easy to find. Moving beyond those indices, you have a gray raised chapter ring. And here, it does appear to be lined up. So, go Seiko. The handset is also traditional SKX, with the exception of the minute hand which has been slightly modified. It's still an arrow, but it's not quite as broad. It's a little more petite and maybe focused. It's a small change, but one I think makes a dramatic difference. And this does bring me to what I think is going to be one of the biggest challenges for this collection, and it really has nothing to do with the watch. It's more metaphysical or maybe philosophical. The SKX is so iconic that I think a lot of watch geeks when they see this key shape and this dial layout are automatically going to think diver, which I think is going to cause some people to just have a hard time accepting a dressy casual watch in this kind of configuration. But even if you have an issue with that, I think once you put this on your wrist, you'll quickly get over it. It really is that good. And there is something to be said about using a dial layout that is both effective and familiar for a lot of people. But ultimately, this is a sports watch. And while a lot of people define sports watches in a lot of different ways, for me, it's just a great everyday watch with both casual and dressy elements. It's basically that one watch solution that everyone's always talking about, or a go anywhere, do anything kind of watch. And that's exactly what we have here. Now, typical of a Seiko 5, you do have a day date at the three, which definitely interrupts the flow a little. And I think this dial would look gorgeous as a non-date. But if you are talking about an everyday watch, I think it's better to have it. Anyway, let's just move on to the loom. And the loom here is great. Seiko basically kept the loom up as if it was still a diver, which you can see here in this comparison shot as it mostly keeps up with my turtle. And when you think about the style and size of this watch, that's simply fantastic. Now at this point, you all know I'm a loom nut, 
And one of the things I loved about the SNZ G11 was that it was a casual watch that lit up like a diver. You usually don't find that, and this is another great example. Now as for the movement, you have a workhorse for R36. It has a 40-ish hour power reserve, quick change day and date, hacking and hand winding. Pretty much everything you need, and at this price it's pretty hard to go wrong with that movement. However, there is one thing I'm not too thrilled about, and that's accuracy. Now, as always, accuracy is luck of the draw, and as I've said repeatedly on this channel, I always have bad luck when it comes to Seikos. And this may be the worst Seiko I've gotten yet, losing about 19 seconds a day. Which really just sucks, and I'm gonna have to fix it myself later. Now, I know forearm movements can be pretty accurate when they're regulated correctly, but it seems like Seiko movements at this price are just all over the place, at least compared to other movements I've run across. Anyway, that leaves us with the strap, and as I said before, it's basically a cheap grey NATO, and not much else to say about it other than that. Now at this price you would expect more, and for a little bit more there is a bracelet version, but with a retail price close to 300 bucks, this should have something more than a cheap NATO. Although Seiko does have a reputation for their straps and bracelets being pretty underwhelming at this price, which is why people usually just swap them out anyways. So maybe Seiko finally realized this and just said screw it. The NATO is going to be okay for a bit, but I definitely recommend changing it up. And this is the setup I've really enjoyed the most, which is on this leather Cordura number from Vario. It's really one of my favorite straps, and I think with this watch it just has a great blend of casual and flash. So it's going to stay on this for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if Strap Code releases a bracelet pretty soon and I'll probably get one of those. Now, when I ordered this Dress KX, I really wasn't expecting much. I did it more out of curiosity. But overall, I'm really happy with it, and I'm really glad I took the plunge, as it went from being curious for just a video to being a keeper rather quickly. And I think this line has become one of my go-to watches to recommend for someone who's new to the hobby. However, it's not all perfect, and I think the biggest issue with these right now is value. Since they are rather new, most places are selling them from the high twos to the low threes, which isn't really unreasonable for a Seiko, but a lot of other brands you're going to have Sapphire and a bracelet for this price. However, as the prices drop, I think the whole package is going to become a whole lot more attractive. And I happen to run across this one for $220 on eBay, so it is already starting. The only other issue I have is that the design does seem to be a bit derivative, but regardless of how they came up with it, the end result is still great. And I think this is one of the best affordable casual watches you can find right now, as it hits the sweet spot in terms of size, comfort, usability, and just a gorgeous look. And this grey version in particular just has a certain style about it, and a style that I don't think will be easily replicated. The Dress KX doesn't live up to the diver legacy set by the SKXs, but I think it more than lives up to the legacy set by previous Seiko 5s, which is just to offer a great affordable everyday watch for everyone. But let me know what you think about the Dress KX down below. And in particular, what do you think about that nickname, Dress KX? I know last time with the 5KX, I got quite a few comments saying they absolutely hated it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.